Fox News dives deep into the swamp of leftism, slowly turning into CNN, while Democrats lose in 2016, so let's overturn the entire government. Beto O'Rourke announces he's running in 2020, and his creepiness is exposed. Plus, an exciting announcement later on in this episode. Let's get to it. One crazy, creepy guy. That's all I can say. Welcome in, everybody. Back in on The Brian Show. We're going to have some exciting news later on. But Beto O'Rourke is a creep. He announced he's running in 2020, to no shock. But what gets exposed is how creepy this guy really is. Apparently, these stories are leaking out. Apparently, when he was 16 years old... He wrote a child murder fantasy. So he fantasized about murdering children by running them over with his car. The Washington Post is the one who ran this story. And here's a little uh, excerpt into that story, which is rather, rather creepy. Just give me one second. It kind of pulled off my other screen. But okay, here we go. So Beto O'Rourke writes this fantasy about running children over with his vehicle. And it wasn't the Washington Post, it was Reuters who uh, released this story. So one day as I was driving home from work, I noticed two children crossing the street. They were happy, happy to be free from their troubles. This happiness was mine by right. I had earned it in my dreams. This is Beto O'Rourke's writing, and it keeps going. As I, as I neared the young ones, I, pull, I put all my weight on my right foot, keeping the accelerator pedal on the floor until I heard the crashing of two children on the hood, and then the sharp cry of pain from one of the two. I was so fascinated for a moment that when after I stopped my vehicle, I just sat in a daze, sweet visions filling my head. That is a disturbed individual. That is, that is more than just someone trying to delve into novel writing. This guy has some serious, serious issues. And it shouldn't shock you. I mean, he grew up a very wealthy, privileged leftist from a judge who he never had to face any consequences. Now, other stories that have come out of Beto O'Rourke, because it was just a release of bombshells on Beto O'Rourke, one after the other. And I'm not too sure why. I'm not too sure if it's the media were only pushing Beto because they were trying to flip Texas, but they don't really want Beto, Robert Beto O'Rourke, the fake Hispanic. They don't really want him to be president because I think they kind of want Joe Biden Or Kamala Harris. So it seems like these hit pieces are getting released. There was one where the fake Hispanic Robert Beto O'Rourke, the drinking and driving incident when he was 26 years old. This story, apparently when he was 26, in that drinking and driving incident, at 2 a.m., he went to go, he he picked up his ex-girlfriend for a booty call. So he put every life in danger 
at the age of 26. So we're not talking like he was 18, 20, 21, 22. He was 26 years old, graduated with a degree. He had the ability to rationalize this isn't right. To drive on the road hammered on his way to go get sexual relations. He put the lives of every single person in Texas on the road at that time at risk. And he sideswiped a truck and tried to flee the scene. All for a booty call. Pretty disturbing stuff. The stories just keep getting worse. I mean, because those are just two. There is a few more. So... Another story was, that was kind of a bombshell, Beto O'Rourke was a part of a, a hacktivist group. Hacktivist group. So, it was an activist group who was hacking computers for their activist purposes. This group was called Cult of the Dead Cow. Now, this was released by Joseph Min, who... He discovered this and was about to write a book about it, but cut a deal with uh, Beto O'Rourke not to release it until after his Senate race was over. And Reuters as well was a part of this. They all had this story for two years. They waited until after this Senate race was over. So apparently... He was a pretty active member in a hacktivist group. So he was willing to go hack people. This is a guy running for president. He hacked into other people's computers, which is illegal, in order to push activism. This guy is who is running for president and potentially may win the Democrat nomination. I don't think so, but he may. He may win. And it's kind of concerning all these stories coming out with this guy. And it also goes to begs the question, how much dirt is on all these Democrats? Because one could assume these Beto hits, which most of them are coming from online sources, reputable online sources, well, to an extent, for the left, their big name. How about that? Big name online sources who more than likely are backing Bernie Sanders. So it seems like they're all now releasing this information. While... What's to say who has other, what other dirt is on these Democrats? Because we know the media won't cover them. It's quite disturbing. But anyways, there's more Democrats that are running. Oh, no, no, there's still one more Beto. Sorry, I almost forgot. There is one more Beto creepy story. The Washington Post article. Apparently, they did an article over Beto O'Rourke and his pranks with his wife. Him and his wife, would he would play pranks on her. And it seems like they were rather disturbing. So Beto O'Rourke was doing an article that was written in the Washington Post article that his friend talked about a prank he pulled on, Beto pulled on his wife. And the prank was he took his child's poopy diaper. Anyone who's seen infants' poopy diapers? Green. He put it in a bowl, claimed it was avocado, gave it to his wife in an attempt to get her to eat it. How sick is this guy? How sick is that? I can tell you if I tried that pretty juvenile prank on my wife, I might need to reinvest in a couch because I'm going to need a far more comfortable couch than that. I'll be on that couch for quite some time. But this is what the Democrats are putting up front. Now, as immature and disgusting as Beto O'Rourke is, there are some serious Democrat candidates who actually we need to fear that aren't getting any airtime. We have this billionaire, Andrew Yang, who is running for president of the Democrat Party, and he's an Asian American in New York. Uh, Never been a politician, he's just a businessman. And he has uh, proposed some pretty radical stuff. So Andrew Yang, he's known as the guy who proposed the universal basic income in one of his first policies, he said, of $1,000 a month for every single American citizen, which comes out to be $12,000 a year for every citizen 
to just get as the universal basic income. I don't know where they think this is going to help people's livelihood, but apparently they think it does. They don't think inflation would come along with it. Pretty insane. Which has not been the most radical things he said. He's also proposed a very creepy and scary social credit score. Now, social credit score, if you don't know much, I even wrote an article on this uh, about a year ago now, I guess, is when China implemented their social credit score as well. And it's, they got cameras following along people. In China, you just can't go anywhere without a camera on you. And they'll, they're keeping track of your scores on how good of a communist citizen you are. And if you aren't living up to it, you get deducted points and you could be prevented from air, air travel, traveling in general, food, medical services, Pretty much their government is able to control you. That's what Andrew Yang is proposing. Now, it's not quite to that extreme. He was saying you only get rewards, not negatives. But we all know where this would transpire is because, let's be honest, the rewards you would get for this is if you're being a good socialist in America. So people like us, we're pretty much screwed and we're never going to get any rewards. Now, Andrew Yang, now more recently, has come out with pretty, pretty crazy stuff. So he goes out and he says, uh, starts talking about how white people, we are one generation away from white people shooting up Asians. Yes, Andrew Yang, 2020 Democrat, goes out on his campaign and says, we're one generation away from white people shooting Asians. Why does he come to this conclusion? How does he come to this conclusion? It's because he claims that China is getting larger and a threat to the United States and white people are becoming a more, are slowly becoming the minority in the United States based on the stat of if you had everyone else who's not white by the year like 2050, there were projected to be less than them. Still would be the majority though. But he says because of that, we're just gonna start shooting up every Asian. This is a Democrat 2020 candidate. And he's proposed more extreme stuff now since that statement, because this was recent, that was just last week when he said that. This week, he's now said he wants to really cut, cut down on misinformation from media. Now, we all know what this means. He tries to phrase this as a combat to fake news in a way, but he doesn't say what is fake news. He just says misinformation. So according to people on the left, if you talk about climate change and say, hey, your numbers and your facts don't align with reality, then they would claim your misinformation, even though you gave reality of facts and stats to say, you know, does man have an effect on climate change? Yes. But does it have much of an effect? No. Does it have any effect that we really should be that worried about? No. That right there would be getting my webpage shut down according to Andrew Yang. That statement, which is about as factual as it gets, it's all about if you, he would shut down all conservative, because he pretty much is going after small web pages. so preserveconservativevalues.com would be one of his first targets to shut down. He will claim that mine is nothing but misinformation, even though, as all you readers know, my webpage, preserveconservativevalues.com, about as credible as it gets on information. And when I get something wrong, I go in and I correct it. I even state I corrected it. Not too often I have to do that because I don't jump on stories the moment they happen. They happen. I let some facts come through first. But Andrew Yang would go and shut us down. He also has proposed an insane idea of 
abolishing circumcision. Andrew Yang, again, still him, has proposed the idea of abolishing circumcision because he doesn't believe that it's as healthy for you as the claims are. Pretty messed up. That's a religious thing, first of all, circumcision. Second of all, the facts do show that it keeps you cleaner, medically speaking, to have the circumcision. And third of all, whatever happened to stay out of our sexual organs, I guess you could kill a baby, murder baby, baby genocide, that's fine. But don't you dare, don't you dare try to chip that foreskin off of a child. The insanity of the Democrats is getting pretty radical and I just don't understand how they're allowed to get away with this and people still support them. I guess they are, even people on the left, like, what well, you can't think that after they come from us, they're not going to come for you. These radicals who are tyrannical, they're going to come after everybody. You may be the last one eaten, but you're still going to get eaten. It, it's just insane. Democrats in this election cycle have really jumped off, jumped the shark in quite a bit of ways. And in some of the ways, some of the ways, as the intro discussed, we're going to get into, is in 2016, they lost. Democrats lost across the board in 2016. We won Donald Trump, we won the Senate, and Republicans also won the House. Now we did lose the House again in 2018, but we gained a lead in the Senate. Donald Trump is trending towards re-election. As I wrote in another article, Republicans will probably win the Senate, lose seats, gain seats, and it's going to end up being the same exact majority we have now then. But why is it then the Democrats are proposing crazy stuff? So they, wanted, they are proposing to, and we're talking about the 2020 presidential candidates, my I add. They're wanting to eliminate the Electoral College, stack the Supreme Court, lower the voting age to 16, and allow illegal immigrants to vote in federal national elections. Why is it they want this? Why is it? It's because they lost in 2016. They can't win by the rules. They can't win by these set of rules because they've boxed themselves in a corner of ignorant voters and big cities. So flyover nation, they can't win. They know this already. And they know the socialist policies do not live up very well within the middle of America. But let's talk about some of these. Let's go with first the legal voting because it's going to be quick, simple. Why are illegals voting? You're not a citizen. You don't get representation. You should not be counted, counted on the census because, well... You shouldn't be here. If you're here illegally, you don't belong here. Turn yourself in, go back home, apply for citizenship. No, we're not saying as Republicans, we do not want immigration. We want immigration. We want legal immigration. We want to know who's coming in. We want the government to know who you are. We want to make sure we're safe, you're safe. We all win that way. Plus, when you're here illegally, you'll get your citizenship eventually, and you'll be able to legally vote. You'll be able to legally push your preferred politicians and policies. The Democrats only want illegal immigrants because Americans don't want to vote for their crap anymore anyways. So they want to bribe in illegal. So insane garbage probably won't happen anytime soon. Lowering the voting age to 16. This is the stupidest idea. Stupidest. What 16-year-old should be voting? What, I, I, I mean, I feel like I know politics rather well. I'm 30 years old. I know politics pretty well. I know, I probably understand politics, the law, better than most 30-year-olds today. That's not saying much. I'm not trying to brag on myself. I am, I'm part of an ignorant generation. So, not saying much when I say that. I couldn't imagine myself voting at 16 years old. Not even... 
I was an idiot. At 16, I was an idiot, and I did not have any rights to vote at 16. The only reason why you want somebody to vote at 16 is because they're an ignorant voter, and they can never be educated enough to vote a proper way. So that's why Democrats want them, because they're the only ones stupid enough to vote for socialism, because they're not getting taught socialist ideas in history, have actually failed all of human nature. The 20th century in the world was destroyed because of communism. We're still seeing the effects of it today. But that's the only reason why you'd want it. It used to be the voting age used to be 21, which honestly, we should be going back to 21. And not only that, because my generation is so ignorant and the generation behind me is even more ignorant, we probably should go ahead and raise the voting age to 25 or 30. Unless, with a few exceptions, if you're in the military, you're a police officer, something where your life is seriously at risk and you're working for the government. And I'm not talking you can be a politician because the politicians need to be raised on age as well. Honestly, I don't think you should be in any political office until you're 35 years old. And yes, that means I can no longer be in a political office and no, I'm not in one, but I am discounting myself from that because I don't think you should be in political office until you're 35 or older. So I think we can all agree, voting age, 16, pretty stupid. And now, let's talk about the stacking the courts idea, the Supreme Court. So Democrats, they're angry because they lost the Supreme Court majority of five to four. Five Republican nominations, four Democrat nominations, and not to mention, we're not going to be losing this lead for quite some time due to the ages of our Supreme Court nominate, our Supreme Court seats and theirs. They have two of them, 80 or older. It, it's just, they're not happy. They know that they, they can't push the leftist agenda without the Supreme Court. So the stack the judge, stack the court system idea, that's a federal Delanor Roosevelt idea, which he tried to push because the Supreme Court was not allowing his new deal to get pushed through, the radical fascist policies. And he threatened the Supreme Court, if you don't start passing some of these, I'm just going to sack it. By sack it, he, meant he was going to add. He actually was going to add 11. He was, FDR wanted 11 new members on top of the nine. And he was going to sack it with far left people far left judges that would have passed. Now, Democrats in this 2020, I think it was Cory Booker and a few others have endorsed the five. Now all of them have endorsed stacking the Supreme Court idea, but some are proposing to add five, which would give Democrats, obviously assuming they got the president and they won the Senate, they would push in five new seats and that would give Democrats a nine five advantage and they would push their agenda. Now, why is that? Stupid. Why is this a stupid idea? Because the pendulum, all pendulum, always swings the other direction. So, you may benefit from this now, Democrats, if you try this, but we're, Republicans will regain power at some point, and we will do the same. So, at that point, we'd probably add 10 or 11, probably 11 new Supreme Court seats, and then we'll do what we want. It's just going to be a never-ending cycle. And we uh, need to prevent that. So Trump right now, he could just go in and say, we have the Senate, we have Trump. We can go add 100 seats and do whatever we wanted. This is why it's a stupid idea. It's a never-ending process. If you want to argue term limits for Supreme Court, fine. That's a legitimate argument. I can hear it. I don't know if I will agree with you because I think I lean more towards lifetime appointments, but I am actually, I am actually open to discuss that and actually bend on it on the Supreme Court. Adding more seats is stupid. Now, Electoral College. They want to remove the Electoral College. Why is that? Because Democrats only want, they can only win by the popular vote. That's because Democrats only go after big cities. So you'll have LA, New York, Chicago. They'll probably come here down in Texas, get Houston. 
Houston kind of leans to the left, so they'll probably win that too. You'll probably get Boston, New Jersey, a few other of those big cities. And that will get the majority. But everywhere else will be ignored. So you'll get these small, tiny sections within the United States that have dense population that will control the entire United States. No, no one who lives in rural areas will get any representation. It'll all be urban. So rural, you're pretty much screwed. And I don't think Democrats understand because here's some logic to point out to them. Why would you want the popular vote over the electoral college vote? They claim that white supremacy is on the rise. Every white person is a racist. If this is true, if this is what your real thought process is, obviously it's not true, but let's just give them that maybe they believe this. If you really believe that, white people are the majority in the United States. If every white person is a bleeding racist, wouldn't it just take a Hitler-esque type politician to come up and say, promote white nationalism, white supremacy? You would gather all the votes. If we're all racist, that's going with that. If we're all racist, we could oppress minorities. That's why this is stupid. The Electoral College. Read the Federalist Papers. I know all the listeners have because you're conservative. You're smart people. You actually have done reading. And if you haven't read all the Federalist Papers, I guarantee you you've read at least good, the most important ones. So you have a good understanding of the Founders' idea on the Electoral College. The, elect, the Electoral College was put in place because the Founding Fathers hated democracy. Popular vote is democracy. So a democracy is all about majority rule. The founders actually have stated many times within the Federalist Papers that they hate, they hate with a passion, the idea of democracy. Because democracy to them was tyranny. The founders created a republic. We are a republic. The Electoral College was created to help out a republic. And it was to guarantee that every single state got their voice and they were represented appropriately within the federal government. Without it, we're no longer the United States. We're America. We're not, we can't be the United States because eliminating the electoral college would pretty much be eliminating states. Once you eliminate states, we're just one giant country. It doesn't really work out. You see the flaws? It's a stupid idea. It'll never change. And let me ease everyone's mind. They're never going to vote down the Electoral College. It's all rhetoric. So what needs to happen, because it's an amendment, they will need 38 states to sign up on this. 38. They only have 12. You're going to have to find all but 12 states to sign up with this. There are more than, 12 small, tw more than 12 small states that will never sign up on this. Never. Doesn't matter how much you change culture, they're never going to sign it because they know they're screwed otherwise. So it's, it's something that will never go away. It's all rhetoric, but it still shows the insanity. So let's talk about one of the biggest issues right now, which is going to come into an announcement that I'm about to release. Fox News. Fox News pretty much has turned their back on every single conservative. They were our only right-wing source we had. The only right-wing media. Yet, what did they do? They turned their back on every single one of us. They are no longer representing us. So they judged Janine Pyro, who is a pretty popular conservative. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. There are times that I'm not the biggest fan of Judge Janine. I love her, but there are times I just don't agree with her. But those are different ideas, just small little ideas that me and her probably disagree with. And I don't necessarily agree with her tactics on combating the left. But I love her and respect her, 
And Fox News removed her for a statement that she actually was right on. She questioned Ilhan Omar's loyalty to the United States when clearly she has more loyalty to Sharia law. It's true. You can't deny it considering she bets Palestine over Israel. That makes no sense. You're supporting a terrorist organization. Fox News suspends her for two weeks. For two weeks, they suspend her. Instantly. Now, we all are irritated by this because Fox News bent a knee to the rage mob. Instantly after, what do, does Fox News do? They hire Donna Brazile. Now, for anyone who doesn't know, Donna Brazile is a far leftist Democrat operative who helped Hillary Clinton get fed the questions before her debate in the primary in 2016. Donna Brazile is a disgusting lowlife, and Fox News hires her as a contributor. I'm not saying that you can't hire people on the left. I am saying you should not hire people on the left that demonize and spread false news and do not give an honest opinion about conservatives. That's what they did. They hired Don Brazil, awful idea, terrible hire, and they could have hired somebody like, I don't know, a Joe Lieberman-like, something like that, which, I mean, they already have Joe Lieberman as a contributor, but you could hire people like that, is my point. They're at least given more honesty, not here to demonize, your viewers, <laughs> to hire Don Brazil is a slap in the face to all of ours, all the conservatives out there. And then Chris Wallace. I mean, we got these leftist hosts now, too. Fox News has been hiring these leftist hosts. Chris Wallace, Shepard Smith, uh, Jesse Williams or whatever his name is. He's an idiot and has no idea what he's talking about. He's on The Five. The guy's an idiot. He seriously has no idea what he's talking about. I don't know what he's doing in politics. No. Anyways, Fox News hired all these leftist hosts. And Chris Wallace may be the most disgusting of them all. Chris Wallace is going out there claiming President Trump is to blame for the New Zealand shooter at the mosque who killed 49 Muslims while they were praying and injured about 40 others. Disgust, disgusting human being. But Chris Wallace blames President Trump for this. This is Fox News. And you're going out blaming the president for something you had nothing to do with. You're blaming the president for this and it's absolute garbage. Absolute garbage. Fox News, you want to lose some all your viewers, this is the way to do it. Now, what happened to Fox News? What is going on at Fox News? Well, doing some digging, I discovered the person who is behind firing, well, not firing, getting Judge Janine Pyro suspended for two weeks. And that woman is named Hafsa Kamal. Hafsa Kamal is a producer for Brett Bear. And unfortunately, I actually liked Brett Bear. But she was a producer for Brett Bear. She is a Pakistani radical leftist who is a Muslim as well, who claimed, went on Twitter and really unleashed against Judge Janine Pyro for her statements. So Hafsa stated, Judge Janine, can you stop spreading this false narrative that somehow Muslims hate America or women who wear a hijab aren't American enough? You have Muslims working at the same network you do, including myself. K, thanks. Soon after this went out, J Judge Janine Pyra was suspended. This far radical leftist, which I'm going to show she was a leftist. It wasn't just her being upset about the Muslim comments. She is a far radical leftist who infiltrated Fox News. And there's many more out there. But this is just one of them. And... Soon after, Judge Janine Pyro was suspended for two weeks, and this Hafsa Kamal has a history of targeting prominent conservatives that actually appear on Fox News. So, 
Uh, she t the people that she has targeted are Michelle Mock and Charlie Kirk, Candace Owens, Ban Candace Owens, Dan Bongini, Bigino, or however you say his last name, I always struggle, and Charlie Kirk. So here are some of the statements she sent to Michelle Malkin on Twitter. She sent, wow, a genuinely vile person. My God, I'm not sure when being a kind human became out of style. Michelle Malkin is a sweet individual and a great reporter. She is arguably the best reporter out there. Michelle Malkin is phenomenal and you call her vile? Uh, for Charlie Kirk, she's counted back. Not as bad. That was probably the most obscene one. Uh, I'm trying to find the Candace Owens one. But anyways, it's kind of hard to read on here right now. You can go to preserveconservevalues.com. It's on there. I've The article is titled... Leftist Infiltration, the woman at Fox News behind the Judge Pyro suspension. This article I released, I break down, I show the tweets of her targeting conservatives. She's demonized conservatives that aren't prominent, just us voters. And she's uh, stated things just like how we white conservatives feel like we can say whatever demeaning thing we want. This is her base. This is her base. She demonizes her base. We need to stand up to Fox News and let them know if they don't start firing everyone who's a radical leftist, we're done. We're done. Me personally, I'm already starting the war with Fox News because we can't take this. We can't take this. So what I'm proposing, what I'm proposing, I put up on the... Brian Show Facebook. I asked anybody, would you like to see more The Brian Show? Watch The Brian Show more than once a week and go to an episode maybe Monday through Friday. Overwhelmingly, the votes were yes. And the ones that voted no, I actually appreciate your honesty because I didn't want to waste my time doing this if people weren't interested. But this is all because of Fox News not being something people want to watch anymore. So here's the special announcement is I'm going to probably be starting here pretty soon, a Monday through Friday live stream episode in the morning, I would assume about 8 a.m. Everyone can watch it live or come back and watch it later. This will be better technology than I've been using. I'm currently getting the technology stuff down. It's going to be live streamed through YouTube. I'm probably going to put it on Facebook live stream for a little while as well and get people warmed up to it. But eventually it's going to have to go back to my webpage because let's face it, I got to make some money, all right? So I need you to go to the webpage and watch this if you can. Now, it will be new technology. It's going to be live stream. I'm going to look into getting actual videos like, let's say President Trump says something, and I want to show you, President Trump, what he said. I'm going to look into getting the technology to be able to pull up the episode. So it's going to be actually pretty, well, relatively professional episodes compared to what we're doing now. But I'm thinking Monday through Friday, 8 a.m., we're going to combat, combat Fox News. If they're not going to promote conservative values, well, why not preserve conservativevalues.com start doing it for us? So I... I Hope you guys enjoy it. It's going to be a little hectic for me. <laughs> I write a lot of articles in a day, so doing an episode every day as well is going to get a little hectic. But we got to fight back in this culture war. Help us out. Tune in when you can. Keep coming to the page. The more you click on my page, the more revenue I get to invest into the page. So keep clicking on the page. Try not to skim over it as often. However, that's going to be it for this episode. I'm going to hopefully start next week on this big announcement that I gave you. So, see you guys next week, hopefully Monday through Friday.